Today on Missing Number, demonic Disney characters, what happens when you enter the wrong back room, and the time G4 ruined a new Halo 3 trailer and pissed off everyone. Missing Number starts now. It may seem like a dream come true for a concert goer to be able to go backstage to see their favorite band, but in one Japanese game, it's anything but. In 1995, a FMV Sega Saturn game was released, oddly named X Japan Virtual Shock 001. In it, you play as a photographer who has to go backstage to take pictures of a real-life Japanese rock band called X Japan. However, walking backstage is unintentionally creepy. The only sound you can hear are your footsteps. There's no other ambient sound. While wandering the soulless hallways, there's an uneasy feeling that someone will jump out around the corner. The way the camera turns makes it seem like a jump scare is imminent. At one point, this happens. A man can be seen just creepily standing in the hallway. Approaching the man will cause this awkward interaction. Good morning, sir. Can I see your pass, please? Ah, that's a backstage pass, I'm afraid. You'll need an all-area pass to come in here. There are other areas that you're not allowed to go to as well, with security guards denying you access. No. You can't come in here. No. The scariest encounter is when you go deeper backstage. There's an even creepier and drearier hallway where if you take the wrong turn, this happens. The only thing that broke the tension was the acting, which was something to be desired. What would you like to drink? We have wine, bourbon, and Japanese sake. Here's your sake. Ten years before Kingdom Hearts, there was a JRPG that was originally supposed to include Disney characters. The game in question is Shin Megami Tensei for the Super Famicom. In the 1992 first-person dungeon crawler, you play as a character in a near-future Tokyo, where a portal to a demon-filled realm is accidentally opened. As you battle the various demons, you'll at one point find yourself in a theme park called Tokyo Destiny Land. It sounds suspiciously similar to the real-world Tokyo Disneyland, and if that wasn't enough, unused sprites in the game's files revealed that Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck were supposed to be in the game as well, but they weren't the kid-friendly characters that you know and love. Instead, they were demonic versions of the iconic duo, with Mickey Mouse wielding two swords, and Donald Duck brandishing a chainsaw. The latter is interesting since Kingdom Hearts creator Tetsuya Nomura originally pitched the first weapon in Kingdom Hearts as a chainsaw. Nomura told Famitsu in an interview, as reported by 1UP.com at the time, that quote, It was this chainsaw-like weapon that I had a rough sketch of when I first showed my concepts to Disney. Everyone got this scrunched up look on their face, and nobody said a word in the entire room. Dead silence. And I thought, no, I guess this one will work, huh? 
depicting a copyrighted Disney character as an evil chainsaw-wielding demon in Shin Megami Tensei probably wouldn't have sat well with the Walt Disney Company. This is perhaps why Tensei's developer Atlas removed Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck from the game to avoid litigation. However, it could be argued that this was a parody and that it would have been protected by fair use law. Perhaps Atlas's location in Japan affected the company's decision due to different copyright laws in each country. Whatever the case, Atlas didn't entirely abandon the idea of having the eponymous mouse and duck in their game. They ended up completely redesigning the characters and included them in the PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16 version of Shin Megami Tensei. They appeared as NPCs named Zombie Mouse and Demon Duck, with the former having a sword through its head, while the latter is a cosplayer wearing a semi-destroyed generic duck outfit. And is it just me, or does it look like Zombie Mouse is flipping the bird? According to Kotaku, Zombie Mouse and Demon Duck show up in the same spots where only disembodied voices could be heard in the Super Famicom version of the game. What's more, the original demonic parodies of Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck were actually included in the Digital Devil Saga 10th Anniversary book. Apparently this is the only time Atlas officially acknowledged the existence of Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck in Shimagami Tensei. It's E3 2007, Microsoft is holding their press conference, and G4 is airing it on TV. Right before the presser ends, Microsoft unveils a hot new trailer of Halo 3. It includes new gameplay footage, and it's the first time the public can get a real look at the single-player campaign. I remember watching this on G4, and being glued to my TV. At the time, Halo 3 was the biggest thing in the world, and the hype for the game was through the roof. So while the two minute long Halo 3 trailer was playing, this happens. You guys enjoying this? They cut to a commercial break in the middle of the trailer. Then when they came back on air, the trailer and press conference was already over. Alright guys, well there you go. That was the Microsoft E3 2007 that was briefing. Amazing. What the actual f To say that this was a colossal failure is an understatement. People like me were furious, with some online users writing at the time. Eat shit and die G4. Boycott G4 from now until the end of god time. Seriously, what a fing joke G4 is. I hope the one that was taking care of this shit gets fired, really. I hate G4 and Wolf for Life. They got everyone's hopes up. I think that was the most pathetic live coverage of an event ever. And I don't usually rip on G4 just to rip on them, but man, that was hideous. How many commercial breaks did they have in an hour and a half? Six? Seven? And as one user succinctly expressed, you know how sometimes you watch a porno and the director cuts away from the money shot? The public outrage even caught the attention of Mega64, who ended up doing a parody about the backlash. It's even alleged that GeForce president had to write an apology to the heads of Xbox. So what in the world happened? Why the heck did G4 cut to a commercial break during such a paramount moment? Adam Sessler, who was covering the press conference with Jeff Keighley and Morgan Webb, explained afterwards that he was the one that arranged the broadcast, but failed to take into account the press conference going on for so long that it would run into an ad break. While the Halo 3 trailer was playing, the clock struck midnight, and Sessler was told that he needed to take the audience to a commercial. The reason, he says, was because the FCC requires all TV stations to do a station identification at midnight every day. A station identification is a TV bumper that shows a network's call sign or brand name to identify itself on air. If a station fails to do this, they're apparently fined at least $1,000. Livid, Sessler refused to take the audience to a commercial since he knew viewers would be upset, and so he procrastinated. That's why during the Halo 3 trailer, you can hear Sessler awkwardly ask, You guys enjoying this? You guys enjoying this? He was buying time in the hopes that the trailer would be over soon. Unfortunately, it didn't end, and according to Reset Era users who apparently transcribed Sessler's now deleted tweets, Sessler resentfully put down his handheld microphone and walked away. Despite this though, the mic actually picked up Sessler angrily saying something to the effect of, They're still showing it. You can actually hear it in the broadcast. Sessler was that loud, even though he was several yards away from the mic. He even said that he may have used more, quote, profanity and invective. 
When the press conference ended, Sessler quote, timidly explained to the Xbox representatives what just happened. Sessler continued quote, the next morning, there were not enough fans to handle the shit flying. G4 CEO at the time, who was personally excited for the trailer, was actually pissed off about what happened, and Xbox quote, wanted everyone's head and felt betrayed that we were not forthright about how we would broadcast the presser. Fortunately, Sessler was able to repair the situation with Microsoft and promised something like that would never happen again. Sessler also kind of got off the hook since people heard his tantrum on the mic. It's even rumored that Peter Moore, who at the time was Microsoft's corporate vice president of interactive entertainment, said, quote, well, at least we know Sessler wasn't part of that shit show. Here's Sessler recounting the incident in his own words with Kevin Pereira on an episode of Attack of the Show, which aired December 2021. Uh, yeah, when we pulled out of the Halo 3 trailer, uh, it was bad. <laughs> First time as G4, mm -hmm. we were broadcasting a press conference in its entirety. It was Live. Microsoft, it was in Santa Monica, and at midnight, you have to do station identifications. If not, you get fined a few thousand dollars, I think by the FCC or, 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 or somebody. And that was gonna happen during the Halo 3 trailer. And I was being asked to take the audience out to break. So for those of you, Jeff Keighley will never make me forget it. Uh, <laughs> you can hear in the video, I'm like, so are you guys enjoying this? You guys enjoying this? And that's me trying to buy time. I'm trying to remember, like, think of how, can, this is your maybe the trailer's about to end. And then I just, I couldn't do it. I, I, I put the mic down and the mic actually picked this up. If you crank it to 11, yeah. I found that out two days later. We're like, I am not doing this. I am not going to be the guy who has to take responsibility for doing the dumbest thing in the history of things. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, it was a disaster. But the As a result of that uh, incident, I was like, can I take over the editorial and how we deal with these things? Uh, and it was just because I felt that we needed to save some face in the, in the light of the industry. I was able to repair everything with Microsoft by just saying like, hey, those people aren't there anymore. Uh, you know, those decisions won't be made. You'll be dealing with me. Surprisingly, the drama doesn't actually end there. A user named MSU Hitman posted on CheapAssGamer.com's forum at the time that during GeForce Final E3 2007 show, Sessler and Pereira apologized for the fiasco and said that they were now going to show the full Halo 3 trailer. But they ended up showing last year's trailer, possibly by accident. Cut back to Pereira, who quips, Ha, just a joke. We'll really show the new trailer later in the show. As you can imagine, viewers had a really good sense of humor about that. <laughs> <laughs> 